name is Juan Camilo Vargas. Uh, I'm from Colombia and I'm a, I'm a freshman. My name is Andres Vargas. I grew up and was born and raised in Bogota, Colombia. to the States in 2007. I came straight to Trinity College. I came as a player. I first came here when I was uh, 14 because uh, my brother graduated from here. Uh, he's now the assistant coach. So I played uh, in the top nine all my four years and then when I graduated I felt like I wasn't ready to leave Trinity. And so I spoke to coach about the possibility of me becoming an assistant coach and I mean, it sounded good to him, and so this is my second year as an assistant coach. Um, it's amazing uh, in the first place because uh, we'll have someone, my family here, uh, I can go to him whenever I feel lonely or anything. <laughs> I was a little worried at the beginning before he came to Trinity and I was a little worried about how he was going to adapt. Um, and so seeing him adapting so well and seeing him being friends with the team and seeing him play well is pretty much all I can ask from him, if anything. Um, so yeah, I've been, I, I'm proud of him right now. So I think even though he's young, he's determined. And that's, I mean, you can coach that, you can, I mean, you can make someone more determined, but it really has to come from within. And if he's got it, if he's got the determination that nobody's going to beat me, no matter if he's a better player or not, I can be fitter, I can do other stuff to beat him. If a player has that in their mind, it's going to be very hard to beat. He was fully aware of what he was getting into when he was playing that high up on the ladder. And then towards the end of the season, he he had a few bumps here and there. He lost again Princeton. He lost against uh, Harvard. What's impressive to me is he didn't, I mean, he didn't go, go down because of that, he just, he was strong and he said, okay, I lost, I'm gonna keep working, I'm gonna do that better next time. And when, when he lost to Harvard, to Brandon at Harvard, he told me I'm gonna beat him next time, he's not gonna beat me. Uh, it's a moment that we've all been waiting for, so yeah, there's always like, anxiety and nervousness, but I think being a little nervous is it's good, makes you, makes you be excited with the national. We're one down, and then Honker comes on court. He, because he, I don't think he would have ever pictured being at Yale 
on Sunday with that much pressure. Went in the first game, lost. He comes out the second game and tells me I don't know what to do, I don't know how to play. Um, and then I tell him what I think he should do. ¿Sí? Por eso es que lo primero que hay que hacer y lo más fácil que hay que hacer es meter la persona atrás. Y eso se puede demorar 10 minutos o se puede demorar una hora. Then he goes on the second game and he starts losing like 7-3 or 7-4. And then I don't know what happened. Something I guess clicked in his mind. And then he started doing the right thing. He started coming back, coming back, coming back. He won that second game, 12-10. And then the rest too, he just played with heart. And you could see Brendan was getting flustered, he was getting frustrated, um, but Juanca was just grinding and grinding and grinding. Changed my strategy uh, and, and things started to work out. He started to make a lot of make, make a lot of errors and I, I started to play really well. If you ask him, he probably didn't really notice the crowd as much. He would hear what people are saying but you're so much in the moment and so focused that everything else is just exterior. You all you see is shades. Let's go Phantom! Let's go Phantom! Let's go Phantom! <laughs> it made a big difference to be honest um, I think just having him around and uh, having him being and traveling with the team felt like like home okay. he's, he's been beside me for my whole squash career so, so it was like very nice having him supporting me and coaching me just knowing that I have my family, it was, it was really like uh, inspiring. 